Hello, I am Dr. Steve Johnson, and welcome to REBT Works, where we discuss anything and everything having to do with REBT. Today, I want to dis, um, discuss something that we haven't really touched upon too much, and that is disputing inferences in REBT. How and when? We often talk about disputing irrational beliefs in REBT, but less time on when and how to dispute inferences. First, let's just uh, briefly discuss inferences. They are the what we might call the first level of cognitions that you know that are in the stream of consciousness that represent our perceptions, our perceptions of reality, and those inferences are based on those perceptions. Inferences are those cognitions that kind of attribute a meaning to a situation or event. And I think another way to say that that is probably more graspable is, is to say that an inference is an interpretation of a situation or event. Let's, let's just take an example and walk through it. Let's say I am having a conversation with a group of colleagues and I make what I believe to be an observation about the content of the conversation, but after a momentary pause, without even receiving a response from my colleagues, I experience my colleagues just turning to each other and continuing what they were saying before I made my statement. And so I infer that my colleagues just don't value what I have to say. And I might go on also to infer that my colleagues don't like me, that they are upset with me for some reason that I don't know, or that they have formed a kind of a clique that it excludes me. These are inferences are either true or false. And we can imagine empirical ways to test whether my inferences are true or false. Some REBT researchers call these inferences negative automatic thoughts that, that at a deeper level are tied to a schema about the way we want the self or others or interactions among people uh, with each other or our life and the world to be, how we want them uh, to, to be. Well, in REBT, beliefs on the other, on the other hand are not interpretations of uh, perceptions as are the inferences, but they are evaluations about reality. For example, how reality ought to be rather than is, or whether reality is tolerable or worthwhile or, or valuable. Why does REBT seem to emphasize uh, disputing, that is challenging and replacing irrational or unhelpful beliefs? Well, primarily because beliefs are more proximate causes of emotions and behaviors, whereas inferences are more distant kind of contributory causes. For example, let's turn return to our example. If Ali um, infers that his colleagues don't value his views on a subject, this may set the cognitive stage for Ali to experience hurt. However, the inference might also be associated with anxiety or concern or sadness or jealousy or anger or disappointment instead of hurt. So his inference isn't a direct cause of the emotion. An intervening cognition, that is a, a belief, would be the direct cause. So. Ali's inference, my colleagues don't value my opinion on this uh, subject, might be associated with a demanding uh, or awfulizing type of irrational belief that would give rise to anger, anxiety, or depression. Or that inference might be associated with a demand and frustration intolerance. So I'm, uh, he might experience anxiety and the behavior would be to withdraw, withdraw perhaps from his colleagues. Or his inference might be associated with a demand and global negative other rating. So he experiences anger and wants to attack them verbally. Or his inference is associated 
with the demand upon them and also global negative self-rating, which may contribute to his depression. So clearly, since the inference is the same and the emotions and behaviors vary depending on the beliefs, the beliefs are the proximate cause and the inference is a more distant cause, necessary but not sufficient as a cause for those different emotions. However, if the inference is false and repeated in similar situation, it contributes to the emotion, especially if Ali has a habit of joining this inference with a particular set of uh, irrational beliefs. For example, let's say that inference is typically associated with the belief, they should value my opinion. And if they don't, they are rude and inappropriate. So when we kind of fuse that inference with that particular set of irrational beliefs, we kind of immediately cause anger. Thus, his inference plus irrational beliefs act as a habit that contributes to Ali becoming angry in very particular situations or similar situations. Thus, while disputing the irrational beliefs is very, very important, and we in REBT say that is the elegant solution, or in this case, the elegant solution to overcoming Ali's anger, disputing the inference that Ali makes in such situations may help him attribute more helpful, adaptive, and true inferences to situation. So, disputing irrational beliefs and inferences can be a powerful REBT therapeutic practice because we are, you know, getting at the elegant solution as well as the inelegant solution. We're getting at the meaning as well as the evaluation. Let's go back to how do we dispute inferences effectively? Well, let me give several possibilities here. One, notice that false inferences typically make a typical cognitive error. It's repeated over and over again. And we might call this an inductive error. Remember, an induction in logic is to move from particular observations to make a generalization about those observations. An inductive order would be from separate experiences or even a set of experiences that the client would make a generalization about all such experiences, even future such experiences, for example. Ali's inference might be that his colleagues don't value any of his views on a subject, but he could overgeneralize from that particular situation or a set of similar situations to all situations and all colleagues now and into the future, which is uh, logically inadequate. This is a very this is very very common, especially if a client holds a deeper belief that people should always value his opinion and that he is worthless, for example, if they don't. So the strategy for helping a client whose inferences are based on insufficient data or a generalization on insufficient data is to, um, is to do something. And let's look at how this would work with, with respect to Ali. How could we help Ali, the client? It would be to help Ali view the problem as temporary, external, or limited in scope, but not in the general global sense that Ali is holding that inference. For example, it might be that with, uh, with exploration that Ali discovers that when he joins a conversation already in progress, his colleagues stick with what they were considering, but in other situations, he doesn't. Here, what we're trying to do is help the client particularize the situation rather than globalize it. However, it is important also to dispute any of the irrational or unhelpful beliefs associated with the inference, because inferences are either true or false, and it might be that Ali's inference is true. It would thus be important to dispute his unhelpful or irrational beliefs, such as these might be some of his irrational beliefs. His inference may be true, but these may be irrational beliefs that he holds, that they must value my views on a, on a subject. 
that doesn't help him at all to have that kind of demand. Or that if they don't value his views, that would be terrible or horrible, or that he couldn't stand it if his colleagues didn't value what he had to uh, say. Or they're just totally rude, inept human beings. Or he goes after himself and says that I'm utterly worthless because they don't value what I have to say. So what we want to do is combine the inferential disputes with the disputes of irrational beliefs. Inferential disputes help clients in several ways. One, it helps them to test their attribution of meaning or their interpretation of a situation because they may be um, making a similar error over and over again. Two, they could, by looking at other possible meanings attributed or possible interpretations, develop more cognitive flexibility than having such cognitive rigidity. Or three, they could overcome you know, selective attention to negative aspects of a situation and ignoring positive aspects of the situation. However, since clients can make false inferences, given our you know, fallibility and tendency for clients to infer threat in the environment, it is important to combine the inferential dispute with the dispute of the irrational beliefs that are the direct proximate cause of dysfunctional emotions and behaviors. There are other ways to challenge inferences. And let me just name a few of these. One, ask if that is true. Ask that whether that inference is true. And if so, so what? So what if it is true that your colleagues don't value your opinions on a subject? So help them in other words, set the stage, Ali set the stage for identifying the irrational beliefs he has associated with that inference. Two, ask, what's the worst part of that inference if it were true? Or three, what does that mean about you if that inference is true? Or four, how strongly do you believe that inference? Five, how does it affect other areas of your life when you hold that inference? Or six, what are the disadvantages of holding that inference? Or seven, what do you think would happen if you acted as if your inference was false? What would life be like? Or what would this situation be like? Or eight, ask, how could you test the truth of your inference? So these are all ways that we could challenge the inferences of a client so that we get some more cognitive flexibility. I hope this helps you as you integrate inferential disputes with disputes of irrational beliefs. And I hope to um, see how you do when you com combine this inelegant and the elegant solution. And um, please consider subscribing to this channel. And I hope we see you at future uh, such uh, uh, events. Bye-bye.